Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد dear brothers and sisters in asdaq al hadith kitab Allah surely the best narrative is the book of Allah wa khair al hadi hadi Muhammad and the best guidance the guidance of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al umur muhdathatuha in the worst affairs are those newly introduced not into this deen wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار and those newly introduced matter they are rejected and they lead astray and everything leads astray they are it's in the hellfire today I'd like to share some uh, thoughts about our dean our great tradition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen us and guided us to it. So if you read the Quran, that you find there's uh, some common thematic and principles. There are two that I want to share. So if you just simply just check the index, how many words are there and how many concepts are there arranged by a concept, you, you, quickly you will notice that there is one thing about uh, denial and one thing about belief. And these two are linked to knowledge. That's why in the collection of the Sahih al-Bukhari, the collector Imam Bukhari, he he used the verse to lead his chapter that uh, the verse فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِذَنْبِكْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the Quran that know that there is no God worthy to be worshipped other than Allah, then uh, seek forgiveness. So even before you do seeking forgiveness, we have to know as Muslims. And that shows an important thing in Islam, an important practical teaching that we have to know and then we put it into action. And the action that is mentioned here is still far asking for forgiveness. It's the immediate thought that comes to your mind is something comes from your tongue. You ask for forgiveness. But really, this is linked to the heart, because not that every not that we already know that everything is time has to start with intention and and from the heart, but also when you ask for forgiveness, simply uttering the word asking for forgiveness doesn't mean anything, or that without the thought that we really ask Allah to protect us from ourselves from our own wrongdoing and miss, miss uh, whether it's inaction or action, that type of act requires humbleness, requires admission of wrongdoing, requires realization of what is the ideal situation and what is the gap between my action and that ideals that we strive for. The other theme in Islam is that Allah created us as human beings who are who are not supposed to be perfect. We are our mission in life is not to be perfect, rather to seek that ideal, to 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 
strive for it. That's why we have to, we, we are born and created not already knowing the knowledge. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah taught Adam the, the names. So in this verse, Fa'lam, that Allah is asking the Prophet to know this principle, the first pillar of Islam, a shahada, the, to know it first. Then when we know it, then we're, so that means we, we start the, our first state is ignorance, then we know it. And after we know it, we have to realize that we are not perfect. We're not there. We did some mistake in the past. We're still doing mistakes currently. That's why I'm asking humbly Allah for forgiveness. So why am I mention all this? These are simple concepts that in every khutbah, every sermon, every reminder, that we always hear that. We open the Quran, we open the Sunnah, always see that. The reason I'm saying that, because if you reflect on the problems in our world, whether it's environmental, war, uh, death, disease, corruptions, it always links to these two things. The when, when someone commits something without knowing, the problem is knowledge. When someone is knowing it, but they don't want to accept and admit it, the problem is in the heart and that they don't want to seek for forgiveness and change themselves. So everything really linked back to these basic concepts, knowing and actually seeking for forgiveness. And to seek for forgiveness, you have to admit it. And to admit it, we have to have that humbleness. So let me travel back in time. When the, when the first, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, first human being, and asked Iblis to bow down to, to Adam, Iblis excused for not doing it, not that he didn't know, he knew it. He got the order. He know that it's a straight order from Allah. And uh, it's clear to him that part. But his excuse is that, Ana khayrun min, that I am better than him. So what prevented him to take that action is the that thing in his heart. That simple arrogance. And that is mentioned also in our teaching of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, that no one will enter Jannah if that person has a, a minute element of arrogance. That minute element could prevent us from accepting the truth, prevent us from, from following the truth, prevent us from seeking the truth, it prevented uh, Iblis from, from uh, the, the, uh, obeying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, subsequently, in the stories of uh, uh, Qabil and Habil, the, the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, that is, again, that same, same reason came up. It's the arrogance. I'm better than you. I, I did things that my conduct, my actions better than you. My profession is better than you my offering to Allah, my ibadah, my worship is better than you, my zakat is better than you, that you don't deserve it and you deserve to be killed. That is summarization of the evil that we see in this earth. That the, just take, take environmental problem, uh, pollution. A lot of people don't know about it. They don't know that plastic has harm, harm from the effect. They don't know maybe this... Uh, uh, global warming or, or the effect of CO2, greenhouse effect. That, that's, that's one side. Then there's the people who knew it, and, but they, they have justifications that I deserve to do it because I, I, I am better than you. I deserve to, uh, to use more energy because I'm worthy of it. I'm doing good things for it. What is it? I need to... I, I, I need this luxurious life. I have industry to, to consume. So always that justifications. So I was watching just random clips that showed up. Lots of shoplifting is coming in, in, around in the news. Those people, I think it's quite clear that stealing and theft are not good action. 
but yet people still doing it because it's that justification that, oh, I have this condition, you put me into it. So whether it's a white collar crime, blue collar crime, uh, criminal acts, civil, uh, civil uh, like uh, oh, oh, transgression, all boils down to, I'm better than you. I have justification to do that. And I deserve to uh, protect myself. I deserve to defend my, 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 <clears throat> my people. And consequently, I will do whatever, regardless what that action is. So as Muslims, we have to, when, to seek that truth. Once we know the truth, we have the responsibility to spread that truth. So this moves me to the next part of the khutbah. When we know about what Allah told us, and then when we go and see the reality of people, that the, our neighbors is, is having difficulty to put their kids to school, or uh, the guy down the street is having problem to, to find a warm place to sleep at night. We have, uh, at the time of this recording, it's during so-called Thanksgiving, we are celebrating with feasts and food and shopping. And that if we roll back and see even the so-called origin of this, this celebration, uh, we still see that the natives are, we still see that the natives are, are not having the basics. They don't have powers. The NPR, in, I think two years ago or a few years ago, reported that they're nonprofit that collecting uh, collecting money and then these utility workers uh, volunteering and donating their time to go and install these uh, and, and connect the power to different homes. This is in the United States. So, so I, I, at some time when we say, hey, donate money and we need to bring water and power to some remote areas in the world, even in our backyard, we still have that problem. Even when we're celebrating Regardless of saying that what happened to those who died and killed and unjustly and lost their land, we still didn't give them the, the basic that we are having. The Prophet Sallallahu said how we treat our, the, the servants of us, the people who are around us, is they eat the same food as us. They wear the same clothes as us. So when the world is complaining that Muslims are not treating and have this not treating so-called they blame islam that having this slavery system even today in this modern world that where there's no slavery we still have different classes so we need to de develop that awareness and we need to realize that there's a gap that i'm i, I what's out there and what I'm supposed to do, I'm still falling short of. That's why I'm seeking forgiveness of Allah. May Allah help us to realize that. And aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So now we know that it's important in Islam to seek knowledge of the truth and be aware of the truth and the reality of this world. And then we go humbly ac accept our responsibility and our reality and seek for forgiveness and put, put things into action. We want to share that knowledge and to share it, the Prophet ﷺ always used the simple language with people. So when he tried to convey that message, he will tell people using concepts that they are aware of. They already know about when you have a fire, uh, like uh, say you, you have a campfire and then these, these insects will fly around it. 
So he said, I am like that. There's a fire, there's a danger, and people go, you, the public, are attracted to that fire, not knowing that it may burn you, and I am there, the saver, to save you from it. So this concept may be remote for us today because we don't have campfire necessarily every day, but it's very close to that the people who he's speaking to. So same deal, what we want to convey about the truth in, in, in Palestine, in Israel, in history around us about Native Americans, we have to first know that we have to use the correct language and terminology. Uh, the Prophet Sallam, when he went to Medina, he found the Jews is fasting one day and they, he asked him, why are you fasting? He said, this is the day that Allah saved Musa from Pharaoh, uh, saved Musa, Moses from Pharaoh. So the Prophet Sallam said, I am more, we are Muslims, we are the follower of Musa, We're, he's our predecessor in, in terms of prophethood. We have more right to commemorate that day. So same deal, when it comes to the name of Israel, it's actually a prophet name. It's, it's in the Quran, Bani Israel. If you read the Quran, everything about Israel, it's a good thing. It's the name of a prophet. Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Uh, so I, why I'm bringing this up, because you see the, this, this, the distinction between somebody use a good name to a good brand to present their secular ideology versus when we are ignorant about this name, we may accidentally, like say, curse that name, even that is a noble name in our tradition. So I, I wanted to bring this as an example is we first have to be aware of what Allah told us in the Quran, then we are will be better equipped and prepared. Then the idea doesn't have to be uh, complicated that professorial saying, explaining the difference between like Zionist and Jewish and, uh, and whatnot and political reality. All we have to do is you share your stories, stories of people you know. These won't go wrong. Like everybody understand what means to be kicked out of your home. Everybody understand that means what you, you, you go to school and then the school collapse on you. Everybody understand that the Native American here, they, they, the basic things of having power in, to light their, their home at night, having the necessity of heat and, and even in every, nowadays the Wi-Fi and internet is the basic understandable uh, common ground in any civilized country. So these things, it, it doesn't require much of research. All we have to do is convey that simple story. And the more that story is close to you, personalized, you put the names to it, the more, the, the bigger the impact of it. So may Allah help us to realize that our responsibility my responsibility, your responsibility in, in today's day and time. We, Allah blessed us with some knowledge, awareness. Allah blessed us to put some effort and, and, and time and, and ability to go and dedicate that service to him. And Allah put us in a position to test us whether we will fulfill that position or we come up with excuses and justifications that that is not my problem, and that is something in the past or in foreign lands or far away. May Allah help us to realize that, and may Allah save us from that arrogance that will take, put us away and prevented us from going to the paradise. I mean, may Allah reward you all. Thank you.